never seen a lame man walk Never heard a dumb man talk Never seen a blind man see I promise you a change this thing Never seen a cancelled death Never seen all the poor get fed Never seen a prisoner set free I promise you a change this for the Big C and Bigger T Podcast. <laughs> I'm your boy, Bigger T, joined, as always, by my boy, Big C. How you doing, Clint? Chris. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's sad. He's a sad panda. And hey, man, we got the man, the myth, the legend, <laughs> Mr. Pure Sweat, skills and drills, basketball man himself. Look. There's another sport going on right now with a weird shaped ball. Yep. A couple of white lines. Stupid and I hate it. And we're we're not, you know, that that's making us sad. It's depressing us. So we we're gonna talk a little round ball. Yeah. With I think I think the Bart yeah, Reed. Bart, how you Travis, doing, man? I'm good, man. Travis and Clint always Love you guys. Love being on the show. So I'm glad you. I'm glad okay, you. Uh, thanks for coming on. I texted Travis at like 2 p.m. Saturday. Like, see if Barton wants to come on. Let's talk basketball. Enough. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, I just like I'm. You know what? I'm like, I'm done with it. Just, I'm done. I'm just, I'm done. I just, I'm like, you know what? I think the most of our Hog fans feel the same way as me. It's like this is just sad. Yeah. It's sad. It, this isn't Chad Morris Day sad. No, it's but it's, sad. It's, 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 it's still sad. It's, it's sad. sad. Yeah. And when you flip it on the other side, stuff's so good because we've, you know, Coach Muss is looking at what two back to back elite eights. And I can tell you, this is the team that he thinks is better than all those teams. And so, Parallel opposite on the other side. They this is national championship caliber team that they've got. Well, and not and not just and we're going to talk basketball, of course, um, because we are excited about it. Like you, for those reasons, um, but baseball's in a good spot. Yeah, softball's in a good spot. Volleyball. Don't mess with us in track. Golf. Track. track cross country. Hockey. Yeah. They're yeah. they're all doing good, but you know Football. what's not doing so hot? Football. So I wonder, guys. So is there a point where, because let's say this outside of Bobby Petrino, which I think that's what type of guy it's going to take for Arkansas to be successful. Is football always going to be in that position where they're just fighting an uphill battle and we're hoping to get eight or nine wins? Because that's why I said we should not have fired Bobby. I don't care what he did, because he was that guy. That you don't yeah. get very often, and yeah. it's pretty true. We gonna we gonna agree to disagree on that one, um, but but that's fine. Well, I think I think Bobby Petrino was good everywhere he's been. He's good for about three years. Well, that's and then now, and then and then people find out what kind of jerk he is. Yeah, because people at Arkansas, if you talk to high school coaches, they were ready to not send their kids to him. Oh, anymore. I agree. Oh, there's listen. No so doubt about that. That that he was going to be hurting, and and a lot of the problems we had after him was because the cupboard was bare on defense. Of course, because he wasn't recruiting well there. Nope. And, uh, but I don't know. But I the personality yeah. type. But it's a play caller. He still 
one of the best play callers I've ever seen. For sure. And he's the equivalent of Darth Vader, but I he felt yeah. like he could win games yeah. with quarterbacks and receivers. And I know, guys, I don't disagree with any of that stuff, but I can tell you this. We never lost games. Yeah. We should have won, and everybody we were supposed to beat, we beat. And, you know, it was yeah. just one of those things. If you could find a guy like him, that but that treats people fair. Oh. Which, be golden. Yeah. Be awesome. Which is yep. kind of Nick Saban, to be honest with you. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> you know, that's kind of that's kind of what you got there. It's kind of you know well, Urban Meyer up until Jacksonville. You know, yep. <laughs> you know, and then, that's right. Then that that went south on him. So, um, but so yeah, now, it, it 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 is it has been tough for Arkansas. You know, I mean, we're not we're not the same. You know, it's not a Hatfield years. It's not the Brawls years. It's not the Lou Holtz years. We are in the SEC now. Yep. Which is a much tougher place to get it done. And uh, you know, basketball's transitioned very well to that. Football has not. Yeah. And um well, and, and Bart, would would you say I mean that's a great point. And 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 would you say part of that reason it's like that is because Arkansas per capita recruits his fair share of D1 basketball. I mean – Produces done. enough recruits. Produces. Yeah. I mean, because you can think of – I just think – if I think of the, the best NFL player born in the state of Arkansas, I mean, who who would you say it is, Travis? Dan Hampton? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, you know what I'm saying? It just – but NBA players, you got Joe Johnson, you know, Corliss, yeah. uh, Moncrief. But I'm talking yeah. about they're all born here. Yeah. Sure. Sure. And, and, and more and going yep. to college too, you know. Yeah. And, so and, and the state oh. of high school basketball, you deal with it all the time, Bart. I mean, yep. it's so much better than high school football in Arkansas. So here's the $64 million question is because I got on, it was not too long ago, someone called in drive time and they were talking about, you know, we just don't have the athletes that, Mississippi has and other per capita states that you guys are talking about. And, you know, Georgia's got more division one football mm. players now than California. And, you know, my response is, well, we have them in basketball. So why do we have them in basketball, but we don't have them in football. Yeah. And it's early. I say this and I'll stick to it. It's early exposure to the game at a high level, which we have yeah. in basketball and we don't have in football. Yeah. And we have the athletes that Mississippi, I promise you, uh, they're just not getting exposed to the game at a high level mm-hmm. and they're drifting away and either not spending a ton of time there or they're playing multiple sports, which takes away from, you know, a primary and, sport. And some of it, I mean, just not to go too meta here, but is the educational system is not that great. You know, sure. it's, you know, we're, we're not ranked high in that in Arkansas. And so, if they don't have the grades, they don't get to play. That's true. And That's so, there's true. a lot of them walking the halls that are non qualifiers. Yeah. You know, they don't qualify to play, and so yep. they don't. You know, they don't get to. They don't get to go out. You know that they could go and do. I mean, you know, I lived in Camden for seventeen and a half years, and sure. there was a lot of kids in the neighborhoods. You know that. You know were. <laughs> you know, backlot superstars, man, that yeah. they could have been playing on the high school football team and doing awesome. And, yeah. uh, I mean, there was one kid I knew real well. He, he was a D one linebacker or, or halfback all day long, yeah. but just didn't have the grades and didn't, you know, had the motivation to, to do it. And so but let's say this, Travis, if there's two States behind us, what would they be? SEC Miss- state. Mississippi, Mississippi. And yeah, you're and right, so, and they're putting them out there. So they're putting them out there. Yeah, you're but, right. But on football, you know, this week obviously went just awful. Yep. Yeah, I mean, awful. I, I would say this is probably before this. I would have said the Liberty game was the worst loss of Sam Pittman's career, but I think this past game is the worst loss of his head coaching career. I mean, just because of the way – I mean, it's kind of like the the A&M game. It was like how they got whipped. 
This yeah. one, I don't feel like they got whipped, but they just couldn't do anything. It was, yeah. Yeah. it was it, just sad. It was a sad, sad performance on offense. Well, and the defense kept producing. Yeah. No, you couldn't. Ask, you couldn't ask for more out of Travis's Williams. Um, uh, you could it, crew. You just can't. I mean, it is. They they kept producing. Drive after yeah. drive, and then the offense would come out and do nothing. Nothing. And to Pittman's credit, this week, he's like, okay, I can admit when I got a hire wrong. Sure. Mm-hmm. And I think he had to finally just face facts that it just – Enos wasn't working out. And so yep. uh, our holy snackies of this moment of this week is that Dan Enos has been fired. That's right. Has been relieved of his duties. He'll be paid $2 million by the University of Arkansas not to call plays. That's right. Um, <laughs> I'll be also, I will be paid a lot less not Woo. to call plays. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, I mean, it just, you know, after a performance like that, uh, somebody's head had to roll. Yeah. Oh, at home, homecoming, yeah. in a must win season chart, and you put up three yeah. points. It's unacceptable in every way. You that's know, the, I, that's the other thing you just hit on it right there, Bart. Is before the game in the press conferences, he's acknowledging to the all the Arkansas media, this is a must win game. Must win, but, and, but you I can't mean, do like that. You, said, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you can't. You know, you talked about Pittman's press conference day before we got on. Me and you were talking about it. How he said it's a must win game. The defense played like it was a must win game. Mm. Yeah. Offensively, did not have the same energy. And mm-hmm. uh, and Pittman's like my teams have always, they always play hard for me. And this, yeah, yeah. So um, I don't want to spend too much time on football because that gum, but it's just sad. It's well, sad. But you know, the big question is now. You know, and and you know, off the air, Bart mentioned it to us. You know, does Sam Pittman keep his job? Um, I think he's going. Fine. I really do. I I think some Clinton think you think he's he's good. But here's the thing, you know, they're, 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 they're two and six right now. But obviously, bowl eligibility is going to be hard. Mm. It, it depends on how you Now, if they go three and nine, I, I don't see him keeping his job. He goes four and eight, I see it as a coin flip. Five and seven, I think he's safe. I really do. I think he can afford to lose one more game. Obviously, I think he realizes changes are going to have to be made for him to keep his job. Or maybe he lets Ian escape to the end of the season. But I think, you know, he knows change has to be made. And I think he knows that's going to be better. Me and you talked off there, too, about how we thought, you know, this is a big audition for Kenny Guy. It is a big, big audition. Mm-hmm. And it's by week, they can do some pretty big tweaks to the offense and make it more player friendly. So, Let's see how they come out of the bye week. Um, they got to go to Florida. It's a big test. It's probably the toughest game left on their schedule. Mm. I don't know. Missouri may be the toughest game left on their schedule. Yeah, probably so. But 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 at least this is home. This is the last trip away from Fayetteville. They've done all their traveling. So all three of us love Sam Pittman. We're all pulling for him. Yeah. But, absolutely. you know, it depends on how you finish. Yeah. Proof's in the pudding. And so we'll see how it goes. Bart, what do you think? Think he's – are you Listen, here? I think if you're a head coach and you fire somebody, you better have a solution for something better. And mm-hmm. so not only do they need to win at least two more games, they need to optically look better. Mm-hmm. And because if not, then it just looks like, well, Dan Edo's not there to blame after you get rid of him, even though we know a lot of it's where does the blame going to fall? So you better have a plan in place. I think they go three and nine, and I think it's uh, – he's – I think he's almost gone. I, I, I don't – if you lose to a bad Auburn team, mm. it's game that match. Yeah. No, no, you – you. I mean, like I said, it all depends on how he's finished. I'm not going to – I'm not going to kick dirt yeah. on the grave yet. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but yeah. It's, but it's being done. You know what I mean? I mean, it's, there's yeah. no doubt about that. We ain't ready to put him in it yet, but, like, hey, it's – well, in today's press conference, one of the things he mentioned is that he's going to be sitting in on all the offensive meetings. Yep. 
and that he's going to do whatever he can to emphasize to make this right. And I think he's feeling exactly what you're saying, Bart. It's on him. His job is on him now. Yep. That he's going to have to show, look, right now, KJ is rated in the bottom half of the quarterbacks in the SEC with good reason because the stats he's putting up is down there, okay? Right now, I don't think KJ gets close to drafted. No. The way he's showing on the field. And he's much better talent wise. He and I think he's a draftable quarterback. Yes. I think he I think I really do, but I think the film he's putting on this year in a NFL pro style offense, supposedly, if that's what you're telling people you're going to to help him out, is looks bad right now. Bad. So I think you need better, like you said. You need to show it on the field. You have better stats for KJ. You get your running game better because that's going to help KJ. Okay. Yep. Are you, you know, calling better routes and better plays? Do you tighten your lineup? Do they, do you, do you simplify things or whatever it takes to get them to where they're blocking better? Whatever it is, do you light a fire in them? Whatever it takes for that to happen. Um, I think he either gets to the end of the year and he does get to stay, but that's going to take some wins for that to happen. That's going to take winning at least two, maybe three of these next games. I think if he doesn't, I think they take the golden handcuffs off (laughs) (laughs) like they did with Houston. Yeah. I think they make it like an easy way for him out. And I think I think Sam may want may want out. I think I don't think he likes dealing with the pressure, right? That he's dealing with as the head guy right now. He's never I, had to deal with that. I agree. Head I, on. Yep. Yep. Because that and goes because people aren't talking about when he shut down his social media and did some things like that. Guys, that's a big red flag. Mm-hmm. It's like Calipari said: you social media is a one sided conversation. Mm-hmm. If you're reading the comments as a head coach, that's a problem. Yeah. Put your narrative out there and let it go. Yeah. Uh, because you got to be confident enough to stand by your own. But yeah, I agree with that. Well, yeah. enough, enough making me sad. That's you right. Know. Yeah. Enough sadness. Let's move on to um better things. Now, obviously, we have Bart Reed here. So let's talk track. No, I'm joking. Yeah. Now, Let's first talk. of all, first of all, I, Bart, I follow you on social media. Yep. And I listen to you every now and then on drive time when I'm able to listen and, and catch you when you're on there. Sure. And uh, now there's a couple of youngsters in your training that have the same last name as you. Yeah. That seem to be doing pretty good, especially a young lady, I believe. Yeah. Uh, your daughter. Uh, talk about them for a minute. Yeah, uh, so I'll let you brag as a proud papa a little bit. Yeah, so I'm I'm lucky enough to marry a great woman. So she was a swimmer in college, extremely athletic. So we're kind of blessed to have really athletic children. And so Lily Reed is my daughter. She's a 2026, 20, so she is a sophomore this year. Mm. But last year as a freshman, she was bumped up to the varsity at Sheridan, and she started every game. You know. That's a big deal considering I played Division One basketball. I didn't get bumped up as a freshman. We've only had two players in Sheridan history to do that. So my daughter was one of them. Wow. She was all conference. She was um, Sportsbook Live, all Arkansas wings of the year, perimeter players of the year. There was 15 or 16 of them. And she got selected to John Lucas, which is the top 160 players in the country for their elite camp. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, this this summer. So she got a chance to go there and she she's six foot tall and she can flat shoot the basketball. She's a she's a perimeter player. She played a little bit in the post, not a post player, but certainly she can handle it, shoot it. And, uh, you know, she's she's being recruited. Girls is a little different because you can't. But Arkansas's interest, Louisiana Tech's interest of some big schools are already after her. So I'm excited to kind of see what she does this year and then my son 
has managed to grow and he's about six foot tall. He's a seventh grader. Nice. And he can he can flat get it. So he was went to CP three, selected CP three middle school combine. So that's kind of like the top two hundred players in the country. So he's 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 a handful in his own right. So both those kids are in junior high high school now. So it's I'm not having to coach them anymore. So they're on their own and I'm just training. So it's kind of nice yeah. to sit back and you know, when I play ball, I'd get a lot of comparisons to Shaquille O'Neal um, without the talent baggage. Um, <laughs> yes. Well, our ability to shoot free throws was identical. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Shaq had a little better form than Clint, but, you know. Yeah, I mean, but we had about the same shooting percentage. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Mine was probably a little bit, just a little bit, but. Now, let's let's talk about this Razorback basketball team. Um you know, there's a lot of new players, a lot of new names that that fans are going to have to get to know. Um, so hopefully they've gotten to know some of them a little bit in the off season. But but there's you know there's even you know some that I'm you know hearing about in some of these scrimmages and stuff that I'm like, wait, who who was that cat? You know, right, um, right. And yeah. and one of those oh, transfer from Louisville, yeah, that guy. One of yeah. those I was going to ask you about is. Is it Jeremiah Davenport? Yes. He's a, a graduate transfer, it looks like, mm-hmm. from Six, Cincinnati. Seven. From Cincinnati. And can shoot Score. It. Score. So, this is the way I would – this Arkansas team is kind of – this is Coach Musselman's brilliant. So, if you kind of look at it, you got the two lockdown defenders that can also put the ball in the hole, Trayvon Mark, Devo Davis. Mm-hmm. Then you've got the two perimeter scores, Davenport and Battle. And so Davenport's the six seven, can shoot it, uh, also hit the mid range shot, but can score in a variety of ways. And Battle is six five, he can shoot it, but he really can slash and get in the lane. But Davenport can knock it down from deep. I mean, these are consistent scores and shooters. I think they respectively fourteen and thirteen, but. Both four well, Davenport's four for eight, uh, battle four for seven. Um, three point, they're pretty similar. They get to the free throw line, they knock down free throws, so they they're they're cold blooded scores, no doubt about it. Hmm. Why, well, you know, and I hadn't really heard much of Davenport until I guess it was the first scrimmage that media was able to go to, yeah. And they were talking about him and Pinion were both just impressive shooting the three, yep, yep. and yep. um that they were going to be our main three-point guys. You mentioned his name. Talk about Mark, Tremont Mark. Uh, yeah. I've heard, I have, uh, he's one I have heard of from Houston. Yeah. Um, he's a junior uh, transfer, but, you know, like you said, he's kind of known as a lockdown defender also being, uh, well, he's 6'6". Six, six, yep. So, you know, can guard multiple positions, I'm sure. Yeah. Much like Devo. Much like Devo. And, and they're versatile defenders. So in college, we always say this, you are what you can guard. So you look at a Trayvon Mark, Devo Davis, I think they could guard one through three, especially with their size and physicality. But for a quote-unquote lockdown defender on a last year team, the Houston team that was really good, guys. They were mm. fantastic. Yeah. I thought Trayvon Mark was one of those sparks. He was so athletic. He just was always in the right place, made always the right decisions. But for a defensive guy, this is a guy that had 10 and 10, 10, four and uh, an assist last game. And Debo, mm-hmm. you know, nine, seven, three, and two. So Trayvon Mark is a big, big piece. And you can tell that Coach Musselman immediately likes this guy, I think, because of his effort defensively, but what he can give you versatility wise, too, because he is going to be something to watch. Mm-hmm. Now, question for me here what kind of season do we need to see Debo have? To be in the conversation, to slip in the early second round, maybe late first round. I mean, I think Devo could have – he could be the national player of the year, and I still don't think he'd make the lottery just right. because they're going to see more upside than other guys. But where, can, where what would what we need to see out of him to get, get in that conversation? Well, I can tell you what some NBA guys, executives are telling me. They want to see the end of the year – stats at the start of the year and they yeah. want to see him put a full year together and really get some performance over time and show some consistency not just 
jump shot and all that, but just showing just overall engagement in the game. And I don't mm. think it's a question of does he play hard, but is he locked in and ready to go all the time? So what you're seeing from him, what I've seen from him already this year, it's a small snapshot in time. Man, he's filling the stat column. Like I said, nine, seven, three, and two. And Coach Musselman admittedly played him a lot less minutes. He Debo didn't even start. And so if he can do that, and I I know you have to set everything according to the competition, but these guys are going to play at the highest. Like, I'm not worried about them transitioning. If he can show mm-hmm. that type of versatility, rebounding, scoring, shooting, defending, he's got – he's going to be on an NBA roster somewhere because of how he can defend. Yeah. He's an NBA all-defensive type defender. No, and one, one thing that was – you brought it up, so I'm going to ask it, um, and I think I know the answer before I ask it. What what should we make of the starting lineup in this first in this first exhibition game? I mean, pretty much might as well just draw them out of the hat. Yeah, I, I think B- Bayfall is the one guy, and I I don't think you necessarily draw him out of a hat. But let's say this: he's he's always been kind of a guy, Coach Musselman, that likes to reward practice, especially mm-hmm. early starts. He said in his press conference, he needed to, they needed to get Bayfall. I think in there to give him a start to see. And I think that's probably because he's the one guy guys that I felt like was physically not up to the challenge. And I don't think skill wise, he was up to the challenge. He is got some potential, but outside of that, I think you can look at it and say the rest of the guys in there had really, you know, had done their part, but I would never say that that's the, that's the rock started line. You know, Debo is going to start. I, Trayvon Brazil is going to start. I mean, mm-hmm. listen, I think Jalen Graham has shown a lot in practice. Can he stay healthy? Um, I think, obviously, Coach Musselman said he was a starter um, until he got back spasms. So, I wouldn't read too much in the starting lineup at all. Well, and I, and I heard that the one thing about Jalen Graham was that he was never – he defense was an, uh, something he had to do, not something he really wanted yeah. to do. He's had to change his, his mental – yeah. process when it comes to defense and that wall was keeping him off the floor last absolutely. year absolutely because he can score guys in a variety of ways you talk about a dangerous guy Jalen Graham can shoot the ball he can finish he's slight but he can handle it and listen I think when he stayed that says a lot to his character that he wants to get better defensively and all the reports that I've seen and the coaches I've talked to is he's lived up to his end of the bargain on that that's what I keep hearing too yeah, yeah. Um, what about let's let's talk about Khalif Battle. You mentioned him already. Scorer, slasher. Um, not Khalif really. Battle from again, Travis? Huh? Where's he from again? Uh, he's uh, the one from Temple. 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 Okay. Now he's not Hard really. Keep up. He can play yeah. point, but he's probably not going to play point much, right? He's probably more of a two guy. Yeah, he's a he's a two guy. Two, two, three guy. You know, if, depending on how Coach Musselman plays, you talked a little bit about this Milwaukee Bucks flow offense that basically is everybody out behind the three point line with a lot of movement. And you know, he talks a lot about passing. So I think really the point guard spot is is the one outlier where I think you only have two point guards on campus. It's L. Ellis and Lane Walker, mm-hmm. and everybody else is a perimeter wing type of guy in, in transition down to forward. So battle is a cold blooded guys cold blooded score this he wants to score he's going to take volume shots and he's expected when he comes in the game to score so this guy he's going to let it fly gotcha. and he gets the free throw line extremely well that's that's one consistent thing with all the guys on the perimeter man they they get into contact going up to finish and, and draw a lot of fouls now a guy we know you know quite a bit about and um, of course, he ended up getting hurt last year after showing some awesome things. Is Trevon Brazil? Yeah. Um, just expecting greater things out of him this year, aren't we? Absolutely. And you know, I talked to Coach Musselman earlier in the season. I kind of was hitting around where they going to put him on a minute count early in the season, and. He said, you know, his plan is they were going to put him on a on a minute count. And he didn't know exactly what it was. But you see him, he he said in his press conference he was supposed to play, I think, four to six minutes a half. He ended up playing 19, which is more. Mm-hmm. And, you know, because they don't get up and down the court a lot. They run a lot of skills. So that lets me know that Trayvon's 
healthy, number mm-hmm. one. He's obviously been clear, but he's feeling good for him to play 19 minutes in an exhibition game. That doesn't mean anything. Uh, but he looks fantastic, and I think this is the one guy that could be a top 10 NBA draft pick following up on what Anthony Black was. Th- he's got that type of talent, guys. Yeah. He is long. He can play multiple spots. And it's got an excellent three-point shot. We just didn't get to see a ton of it last year. Yeah, You know, and that's one of the things I was going to say. You, you hit a key word, the guy. You know, last year I felt like Nick Smith was the guy, and then he got hurt, and it ended yeah. up being what it was. But I feel, really feel like the guy on this team is Trey, Trayvon. Like, it's the team's yeah. going to go as Brazil goes. Yep, yep. Al Brazil goes, and I think Devo Davis is the leader, de facto leader of that team. And I think what you're going to see is Davenport is the guy that they're going to look for when he comes in the game to get the ball to the score. Okay. You know, and one thing that's impressed me about Trevon Brazil, it seems like mentally last year was good for him. Yeah. It seemed, it seemed like he – um I don't know. He, he just seems like a guy that understands his role – understands the team, understands what Muss wants. Yep. Uh, he seems just mature, I guess is a good way to say it. Yep. Um, and he he's a guy that when I hear him talk, I I trust him. You know, yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I, I trust, okay, this guy's going to help lead this team, you know? And, and yep. I think, I, th- I think I saw other guys looking to him last year, even on the bench sometimes. You know, just in you know watching games and stuff, you'd see him going over and talking to him, yep. and so I'm I'm really looking forward to what he does this year because I, I think you're right. I think he could have a special year, special, and have a special draft day. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, because when you got the ability to fly like he does, oh. you're that long. And you can shoot outside. You got pretty good handles. Yeah. And you're a willing defender, shot blocker. Yep. I mean, let's let's not forget that's what he did at Missouri. Right. His freshman year, his main thing was defense and blocking shots. That's it, because you know? he played, Travis, he played out of position, mm-hmm. which you know, at that time Bill Ingram, who was with the Hawks and I trained, you know, his his good buddy was the head uh, the Missouri head coach at the time and you know, he said, like, we're playing Trayvon out of out of position. He's mm. not a true five. He can play the five, but he's a four or five can step out. Mm. And But, man, he took on that role, and you couldn't tell because he was a natural shot blocker, like you said, natural mm. defender, yeah. and did what was required and had a great freshman season playing out of position. Yeah. So, man, what you saw last year was special, and you're, and you're right. This could be even more special. Yeah. All right, Bart, another question for you. It's November 29th. Two minutes left in the game. Arkansas and Duke are tied. Who's 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 running the show? Who's running the point? Not asking who's starting, but who who you seeing running the point at that point? If that, if that was to happen, who's Musselman going to put his trust in? Because it may not be the same guy that it is now. But by the time we get to that point, what do you think? For sure, I, I think he's. L. Ellis is putting a foot forward where he's showing controlling the basketball that he can fit into the system of what Coach Munson is asking. And so I know he doesn't stick that phrase very lightly. But I think right now, if you're giving me one possession with the score time, I, I think the ball goes in Devo hands up right now. I think he's a guy that's been there before. As you, as you look at it, I think it what was it, nine players in the entire – SEC have been in that position, have been at the same school for the same number, or maybe it's college total. The guy's been at Arkansas. He gets it. He understands Coach Musselman. Mm-hmm. He can handle it. He can shoot it. He can dribble it. So I think it's really just him. It, it, it's it's going to flow through a lot of people, but it's easy. Gotcha. Well, now, you just mentioned a guy, next guy I wanted to ask about, uh, L. Ellis. Uh, the transfer from Louisville. Uh, the more I hear from this young man, the more I really like him. Uh, you know, he did he did a press conference the other day. Um, 
before we got on here, I was listening to, uh, I guess the hog pod or whatever with Bo Mattingly just had him on and, uh, was kind of telling his story a little bit. Um, he's, he's an impressive guy and he's, you know, at Louisville, he was more of a, you know, he was a point guard, but he was a scorer. And I think Muss has been talking to him about being more of a distributor here. And, uh, he seems to be taking on that role and and in the first, uh, you know, in the scrimmages and in the first game, you know, the other night, he he took on that role very well. So what are you hearing about him? Well, he's a super talented guy. And I'll tell you, you don't realize how bad of a season that we will have until you get a guy like this. You know, throw the scrimmage and who they play. In two games, he's gone in a pass. He wasn't turned the ball over. He scored. He had nine, three, four, and four. Uh, hey, is something covering your microphone? Yeah, you're oh, coming yeah. off real muffled. Hey, my bad. Can you hear me now, guys? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that better? Sorry, yeah. guys. So, L. Ellis in two games has done a yeoman's job. He's done everything that he's been asked to do. And you're coming off a bad Louisville team. And I don't even think some of the coaching staff knew what to expect. This guy's had no turnovers. He's mm-hmm. scoring. He's distributing. The flow of the game is extremely – it's at a high pace, but it, but it's calmed down when it needs to be. And I said this going into the season. The two biggest spots that you can look at are the point guard spot, and that's L. Ellis obviously being the older veteran, and then the minutes that Layden Barker comes in behind him and plays mm-hmm. could be the most important minutes on that roster because we are we have not had a true point guard like an L. Ellis no. in a long time. Yeah. No. We've had people that can handle the ball. But last year, it was a coin toss. Who's bringing the ball up? Anthony Black, Nick Smith, who's, mm. you know, Note was bringing the ball up but was really a scorer that was in disguise because we couldn't – we have not had someone that – this type of caliber that can do the things that he can do in a long time. Well, and what's his name from Wichita State? Uh, what was his name? Uh, six, five. Oh, wow. Uh, score. Uh, uh, athletic guy. Real athletic. Anyway. He'd bring the, he'd bring the ball. Was it Council, Ricky Council? Yeah, Ricky Council. Yeah, Ricky Council. Yes, yes, yes. That's right. <laughs> he'd you know he'd bring it up sometimes, and Anthony Black would be down running baseline. You know. Yeah. Yeah. But so you're right. Yeah, we haven't had a we haven't had a point guard like that, and and you're right too. Ellis, they had a horrible year at Louisville. Yeah, they got beat by like a D two school last year. I, I know, it, and that's uh, how depressing is it for that? Yeah. Like I I knew it was bad, but I forgot how bad that was. But this kid is a diamond in the like. I'm t- this kid's special now. I don't. Mm-hmm. You can tell right off the bat, like he is comfortable in any type of situation. So, Clint, the answer to your question is: besides Debo Davis, what I've seen in the first two games is if you're not giving that ball to Debo, it's going to L. Ellis right now, from what I've seen. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's awesome, awesome. Um, so we got a big test coming up. Yep. Um, man, but on last year's team, how damaging. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of advantages to playing a team like this, but also I think back what happened to them last year at Texas. You know, they yes. got they got stomped, and you can't tell me that didn't affect some confidence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so what well, what what should we expect at going to Purdue? We're going to Purdue, correct? They're coming here. Yeah. Coming, oh, they're coming here. here. Yeah. But but let's say this because it doesn't matter because Matt Painter's done such a great job there. They went on the road. They went out. They're the number number three team in the country for a reason, and it's a gut check, and they can do everything. They play both sides of the ball. They're extremely disciplined, and so it is one of those games where if you're coming out not prepared, it can get ugly and get ugly in a hurry. So uh, there's no doubt they're taking this extremely serious, and they're all business as of right now getting ready for this game. Well, we're probably going to see more of his true rotation. Oh, yeah. Where he has the guy. I mean, like, it's not like he's going to pull the names out of the hat or anything. We're going to see. Yeah. His. No, he's he's going to play. Coach Muss is – when the competitive juices are flowing, he's going to fall into who he has faith in right now. I think the big thing to watch for me is 
He's gone with the seven guys, a seven to eight man rotation pretty much for the last two seasons. This is the one team I think he can stretch it to nine or ten. Does he still keep it in a tight seven to eight rotation? That's what I'm really curious to see. And the people I'm watching right off the bat, number one is Joseph Pinion. Because Joseph is playing like the Joseph I know that was an Arkansas Hawk that was before the knee mm. injury, where he was not thinking about his knee. He's an explosive athlete, can shoot it. He's being consistent in practice. I'm I'm looking at him, and then I'm looking to see players like Jalen Graham. Where do they fall in and, and kind of see if he's sticking to a bigger rotation that, as compared to what he's done in the past? Well, you know, and I've heard that a lot about opinion about how, you know, the, he seems more confident on the knee. How big of an issue was the knee? Do you think okay. into last year of him not it playing? Was huge, huge. Uh, guys, it was even an effect when you saw the knee for, for us with the Arkansas Hawks in the summertime uh, playing 17U. He was just, you could tell the mental, even if your knee's healthy, it's the mental side of it that really, mm. do they really trust it? Will they really plan on it? Will they go on? So there's no doubt it was a huge factor, uh, him coming back. And you can tell right now, it's not, and that's the Joseph I know because he's always been an explosive athlete, can score, can handle, and can shoot it extremely well. Hmm. Because That'd he's be a great capable to be able to have defender. him. He's a capable defender, guys. People are saying, yeah, well, he's, defense is a – he's got the tools and the talent and athleticism to be a really great defender. And some of that's just how advanced Coach Musselman's schemes are and then him being a freshman. Uh, yeah. But Nick Smith had his troubles last year. It, some of it's just age. Well, uh, but Joseph, defense, as far as it, if he's healthy, should not be a problem for him to stay on the court. Well, and I, and I noticed that last year. I didn't feel like at times that he messed up defensively, it was because of athleticism. Right. I felt like it was fitting into the system and learning the system. Yeah. I felt like it was mental mistakes. You know, it's kind of like a, you know, in football, an offensive lineman that's just – I, you know, like I think some of our problems with the offensive line right now is communication. It's not necessarily that they're getting whipped by the player. Yeah. It's they're not running the play the way they should. They're not running the system the way they should. And I think that's what Pinion was doing last year. Yeah. There was times when he when he was out there, he showed athleticism and did a great job if you watched him. Yeah. So yeah, I think I think he can handle it. You know, I mean he's yep. he's Tall, long. I mean, you know, he can, you know, he can handle guarding yep. people that's going to be guarding him, you know. Yep. Yep. And when he stayed, guys, that made a big statement that he believes that he can fit in and have a role in play. So, yeah, yeah no doubt. So, no, this is totally not Razorback related at all. Cause, uh, but go ask a question. Um, what are you hearing about Darian, Darian Ford? At Arkansas yeah. State, how's he doing there? How's he looking? How's that transition looking? So he's doing really well. So I'm 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 lucky enough. So my daughter's coach uh, in high school, her son is on staff at uh, ASU, and he came from Alabama and Coach Nate Oates. So Barry Ford's doing great. He's he's fitting in. He's going to have a huge. I think he's going to have a huge career. But I think if you look at it, this season is going to be one of the biggest turnarounds if you compare it year over year that we've seen in a long time. And to that point, K.K. Robinson is doing extremely well at uh, ULR, or Little Rock University, yeah. sorry. Yeah. So I think you look at it, the Razorbacks are landing in a great spot, so D. Ford's doing well. I'm going to try to get up there and watch him play a couple times, but I've been lucky to have K.K. back in the gym. He's in back in Little Rock, and I think they're both fitting into a, to a nice role in state with other Division One teams. Well, he's yeah. got they've got one of the twins at Little Rock too, right? One of the middle Yes, yeah. yes. And they have Cordis Williamson's son. Oh wow, great! Yeah. So definitely may have to may have to get out and watch a Little Rock game this year. Yeah, cause, absolutely. Because Daryl Walker puts in an NBA type system, and they're 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 fun to watch. Sounds yeah. like he's got the horses to run it too with him. Yeah, yep. Guys, yeah. turnover so high at these universities. I I don't know how the coaches put up. It's crazy. Oh uh, uh, no. Now, now I, I saw an interesting question on Facebook, and once again, not Razorback related, but you're here, so let's ask yep. it. So, if you take a 16 seed from the NCAA tournament mm -hmm. and put the Greek freak on it, <laughs> just, yeah, so you're a 16, 16 seed, do they yeah. win the NCAA tournament? 
Uh, they get they they get competitive in a hurry. I, I don't know if they win it, but they certainly win one or two games for sure. Okay. You know, but yeah, it, one player in basketball makes a more than any other sport. One player in the game of basketball represents a more competitive advantage than any other sport. It's just uh, it, one guy or one girl can make that much difference. For sure, yeah. It's all matchup. Razorbacks again. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm just no. I, hey, that's an interesting question. No, I saw it on Facebook, and I'm like, they put Giannis on a 16 seed. I'm like, eh. I'm like, would they win the tournament? I'm like, eh. the problem is they're going to play other teams that are when they get to the Final Four and Elite Eight that've got NBA type player. Not as good as that, but as a collective, at some point in time, you can take one person out of a game and make somebody else hit shots. Okay, I got another non-Razorback question for you before yeah, we wrap up you, with some Razorback. It's nonsense questions. for the rest of the show. No. It's nonsense. I love it. I was asked this today by a uh, fourth grader. I, I work at elementary school. If you, oh, if yeah. you're in the woods and you only had a sport to defend yourself. Yeah. You <laughs> Is there any possibility that Victor, women, mom, whatever his name is, yeah, the number one NBA draft pick, was he seven six? Yes. Has handles like a guard, shoots outside shoots. like a guard. Yeah. Any chance that he's a bust? Zero. He <laughs> he's a star, superstar. Dirk Nowinski, Larry Bird, Michael type talent. I mean, he's all kidding aside, he's that good. I, I don't there's no way he's a bust. The only way he would be a bust if it's injury and it gets to be like a Greg, Greg Oden situation yeah. where he just doesn't hit the court because of an issue. See, I, and that's what I told the kid too. I was like, I was like, I don't think there's any way he's a bust because the only weakness he might have is some guys might can muscle him. Yeah. But he's so aware of that. If you hear him in interviews, he's yeah. working on that. And he's only, he's only what 17, 18 years old? Yep. Okay. So he's working on that, 19, whatever he is. Yep. He's working on that. And he's got the skill level to not have to go down there and muscle with guys. That's that's the kicker. He's got the skill level. To, he doesn't have to go down there if he doesn't yeah. want to. And that's the deal. And he's just gonna get stronger to where he can go down and muscle with them. Yep. As he gets stronger. And so, yep. like you said, injury would be the only thing. Like you said, Greg Olden, that's a perfect example. You yep. know, so, some kind of situation like that. I just don't see, like, to me, that that's the safest pick I think I've ever seen. 100%. <laughs> and, and let's say this. <clears throat> San Antonio has shown over time that they have dra a draft extremely well. So, I just have faith that they don't make bus decisions. You know, yeah. you take Kawhi Leonard, you guys forget they pick Kawhi at what eighteen or twenty one yeah. or after you know trouble and everybody's like, oh, that's a waste of these guys do their homework. I'm interested to see how much they play him in the regular. Like, do they play him forty games? Do they play him all like eighty games? Not like I'm just interested to see how they, you know, put yeah. out his minutes to start. Well, they took Tim Duncan when a lot of people were saying, why are you taking him? You have David Robinson yep. already. That's right. That's and right. That worked out pretty well for him. So. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. All right, yeah. so here we go. Going back to the Razorbacks. The end of the season. I'm not asking you to, to give a, you know, lead pop lock or nothing like that, okay? Yep. But what do you think – what do you think the ceiling – for this team is to the 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 goal to shoot for the the ceiling for fans expectations and what do you think is the safe reach for fans for expectations well the safe reach is to to repeat what they've done and that's getting to the elite eight i think coach musselman teams are going to play their best basketball going into the ncaa tournament i think that's what you can expect mm -hmm. from the coaching as far as the talent wise, this is the most talent he's ever had. That that includes last year. That includes he's got talent, but he's got a great mixture of older players, and he's got 
a great mixture of guys that can score and shoot the basketball. Guys, we haven't had a we haven't had a team that's had two to three shooters on it ever since he's been here. We have not been great from behind the three point line or particularly great from field goal percentage, if you remember, with a lot of these teams. It's scary to think with a team that can shoot like this. And I know they had a little rough start uh, against UT Tyler. That doesn't matter. They're going to hit shots. I think this is a national championship caliber team. Now, guys, what were they picked in the SEC preseason? Third, fourth? Something like remember? that, yeah. I mean, they, I they, think they, it was they, third. But Tennessee was first. And I think. Okay. Yeah, Tennessee, and then uh, I'm trying to think who else was. But but let's say this. They were picked second last year, and they finished 10th. Well, that's not going to happen with this team. So they're picked fourth. Let's say this. This team is more likely to finish first because uh, Texas A&M is the other powerhouse right now. So it's Tennessee, Texas A&M. Um, this team is as likely to finish first as it would be six. I don't think you see the drop that they had last year to being picked second and then them finishing 10th. I think – this is a team that can consistently stay in the top four and they can win some games on the road. And certainly I think it's a national championship caliber basketball team. Well, I think the core of this team's more upperclassmen with two just five star yep. stud recruits, you know, yep. coming in. Yep. Like we're not we're not counting on the stud high schoolers. Mm. Right. But we got them sprinkled in what you need. Yep. So but we're not counting on them to figure it out like we were last yeah. year. Exactly like, right. I mean, we're talking about who's the man on this team when we say Devo, Trayvon Brazil. That's that's who. Now, They've got experience. Yep. Yeah. Now another. Let's talk about winning a game. A while back, me and Travis both. This has been years ago. When we did the podcast, we both picked all-time Razorback teams. Mm -hmm. I was going. You tell me which team would win. I'm not going to tell you who it was. One team had Corey Beck, Moses Moody, Adis Tony. Corliss Williamson, Bobby Portis, and Alex Dillard off the bench. Ooh. The other one had Lee Mayberry, Pargo, Todd Day, Joe Johnson, Oliver Miller, and Scotty Thurman coming off the bench. Ooh. Which team you taking? Woo! Man, okay, now hold on. Now, hold on now. Give Because I tried to write them down because I knew. All right, give them to me one more time. One more time. Okay, team A had Corey Beck, Moses yep. Moody, Adis Tony, Corliss, Bobby Portis, Al Dillard is the sixth man. Mm. The other team had Lee Mayberry, Gennaro Pargo, Todd Day, Joe Johnson, Oliver Miller, and their sixth man, Scotty Thurman. Woo. All right. So I'm going to go Lee Mayberry, Pargo. And I mean, it's close. Big T takes it. <laughs> I mean, that's close, buddy. We asked that question with Big O. We went over this with Big O. Yeah. He, he started breaking it down like, okay, I'd probably be guarding Corliss. Yeah. <laughs> so, Travis, Nor is that we your team? We got to do it in our lifetime. In yeah, Olympics, yeah. Man. Okay. Obviously, you can take Moncrief and Joe Klein. Yeah. Yeah. Man. We, we, went with, we went with people since we've been watching Razorback basketball. Right. Okay. Right. So, you know, we started with the Oliver Miller – I mean, like I watched a little bit before that, but yeah. I remember Oliver Miller, you know, Lee Mayberry, or whatever. Like right. I would have felt right picking Ron Yuri because my memory was not that good. I mean, because that was about when I was coming on. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. and uh, and I think Pargo is one of the most underrated players we've had at Arkansas. A hundred percent. I picked Al Dillard just because I love to watch him shoot it from the snout. Of course, and and Dillard's a great and but listen, people forget Pargo spent a number of years in the NBA. And one name I I didn't hear on there that probably could Pat go down Beverly. as having, huh? Patrick Beverly. Patrick Beverly. Yeah, yeah. Guys, we right. talk about football. I was thinking that as I was reading the list. I can't believe neither one of us picked him. Yeah. He, who might go down consistently because he never gets hurt. He could play and be an all NBA defensive guy for a long time. The difference between Arkansas football and basketball, you guys just made a list of some stellar teams that's tip for tat. I don't think you could do that same in football. And they got 80 people on scholarship. Yeah. That's the difference. Yeah. That's you, you the talent. Val valid, valid point. I mean, yeah. Not every one of those guys at least had a cup of coffee. Yeah. 
in the in well the do you remember when Pargo was in college yes when he would get hot oh he'd be hitting like with people all over him hitting turnaround no look jumpers from three point line and just he, ripping them no one so listen this is how close no one that team with part it had Pargo Joe Johnson Teddy Gibson Brandon Dean mm. if you remember it had no size at all. Yeah. If that team had any size. Yeah. That is a legitimate Final Four consecutive yeah. type of team. And he was really close to signing. Who was it that was on that that didn't? Was that? Oh, man, it was another NBA. That wasn't NBA. Al Jefferson, was it? No. Okay. So, Al Jefferson was in that mix. But it was – there was a couple more players. But I was trying – you know, because he was in the finals for Greg Oden to get him. Mm -hmm. uh, because of the Conley connection. And then there was somebody else. Uh, well, he had J.J. Sullinger that transferred. Yeah. Um, so that team was so talented. But I love to watch t uh, Teddy Gibson, Brandon Dean, and that group, Pargo and Joe. Yeah. That was a good team to watch. Yeah. Brandon Dean uh, worried nope. me with his dribbling sometimes. He wasn't, he wasn't the best ball handler. No, he wasn't. And it was shaky. But yeah. was there a guy but that once was he got six going that could oh what an athlete. Oh, if he got by you, see ya. Yeah. Well, can you imagine what Nolan could do in the transfer portal area era now that we're here? We just talked about all them guards, all the stellar guards, like he had no size. Yep. Yeah. He goes out, and gets a Kamani Johnson out of the yeah. portal. Just, you know, a big that can play that can run a little bit. Just yep. yeah. some rebounds, play some defense. Yeah. Well, well, guys, think about this, because Nolan doesn't get the credit. How long did it take us to recover after Nolan? Shows oh, that he's an all-time an all -time no. great as we transition this year to play Duke, which arguably at that time, Krzyzewski and Nolan were two of the best coaches the game's ever seen, not just at the time, ever. Yeah, uh, for sure. So he, he, he did it on the court, won on the court. I mean, he did it all. Well, and look how, look how much the things that he used – on the court are being used right now in basketball. Yep. Way well, ahead I mean, of his time. I well, mean, yeah, they had to regulate the game to stop him. Yeah. I mean, the hand check rule might as well be called the Corey Beck rule. Yeah. That's right. I mean, Clint, Clint McDaniel, McDaniel. Yeah. McDaniel but, yep. they, they basically, they tried to, they took away our defense and the next year we still almost won it with them taking yeah. away the way we played defense. Yeah. Yep. That, that's how good they were. There was no one more feared than Arkansas Razorbacks at NCAA tournament time, regardless of the seed. Yeah. No, te right. no team, no coach wanted to play them in the NCAA tournament because the way they played. Well, and hopefully we see that repeated this year with this team. That's right. Musselman's put together a great team, and, and we've hit on it already, but I think hearing him talk, he's happy to be coaching a mature team. <laughs> Yep. You know, he's he's not he doesn't have the six high school kids that he's having to worry about and and build up. And so yeah, I think it's gonna be a great year. You've given us some great info on some of these guys. Um, Bart, we appreciate you coming on, man. Man, and, I love it, guys. Anytime. It's a real man, pleasure. We'll definitely have to have you on after the Duke game. Yes. So maybe before, I don't know, but around the Duke game, we definitely have to get you on. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, because I was looking, sure. there's some there's some fun matchups on this. I mean, they play in Stanford, Oklahoma. Um, you know, yep. because don't forget, Oklahoma guys gave us a pretty good thump in last year too. Porter Moser's team. So, yeah. you know, you guys mentioned uh, just talking about Texas. Oklahoma did the same thing, so they bounced back. But yeah, there's some and, and started off with Purdue because I'm telling you that, that I that, hate that he's at Oklahoma because I cannot. Not pull for Porter Mosier. I, I know. Love him, yeah. I yeah. love yeah. him. A lot of people when he was at Little Rock, when Nolan got fired, they wanted him to go after Porter Mosier. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. Arkansas wasn't going to hire from within the system. Um, never have. Yeah. Never probably. Well, I don't know. Your check will do what he wants, but. Yeah. So. Well, yeah. well, listen. They closetly just played. So Oklahoma came down and played Mississippi State as an exhibition game at Jack Stevens Center in Little Rock. Two weeks ago, which kind of went under the radar, but Porter brought his team back. Is that I, I would have loved to win? I didn't make it out, yeah. but I didn't know yep. that. Yeah, yep. 
That's pretty so, cool. Yeah. Well, folks, thanks for listening. And uh, look, football's sad right now, but let's let's look on the bright side. Basketball's here. Right. It's here. <laughs> it's here, baby. Yeah, Bart, before we go, won't you plug all, all your pure sweat again? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Pure sweat basketball. Listen, there's probably news since we – I'm at Summerwood now, which is a new facility in Bryant, which is absolutely beautiful. Bryant Parkway. Summerwood Sports, two courts. They're building another probably gym with four or five courts in the near future, so it's the basketball hub. So uh, check me out at uh, Bart Reed Pure Sweat Basketball, summerwoodsports.com. Check him out, folks. And, hey. The proof's in the pudding. He's got a couple of future big time ballers coming up in his own house. That's right. He can he can maybe train some in your house too. All right. So uh so uh give give Bart a a call or connect with him online and he can hook you up. So uh Bart, man, we appreciate you big time, man. It's always thanks, enjoyable. Guys. Always a great conversation. And thanks for bringing your knowledge. We didn't even get into high school guys this time. We'll have to talk about that some yeah, other time. time. We're out of time. But, uh, yeah, folks, thanks for watching and listening. Uh, check us out on all the places you find podcasts. Like, share, comment. What do you think? How sad are you? And how excited are you for basketball? Let's forget about the sad stuff. How excited are you for this team? What do you think the ceiling is for it? You think, like Bart, this could be a national championship team? You think it's at least a lead eight team? I tend to agree with him. I think he's right on on it. What do y'all think? Have a great week, y'all. God bless. Sweat, work, filthy, dirt, harvest, hurt, kingdom come. When I work, my hands get filthy down in this dirt Won't see no more than I hurt Cry in your kingdom come Listen I wake up in the morning I bow my head to pray Mama told me if I don't Ain't nothing gonna change These prayers breaking up hard rock So I can sow the seed in a bread and no eggs and pain Lord knows I gotta follow his lead That's why I swear When I work, my hands get filthy down in this dirt Won't see no more Till I hurt, cry in your kingdom come Oh, I swear When I work, my hands get filthy down in this dirt Won't see no more Till I hurt, cry in your kingdom come